And speaking of coming, I was gonna say you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is you beat him to the meat. <laughs> <laughs> we beat the meat, <laughs> the meat beaters, and <laughs> that's how we open up 2020. Sure. We're what? <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, don't put it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year! It is January 9th. I know uh, we're a little late on this, but it's okay. It's uh. The uh, Going Commando show uh, the first of 2020. I'm indeed your host, Tank Rodriguez. And, of course, next to me we got James Dean. How you doing? I'm hanging in there, hanging in there. I'm uh, glad to hear that. And, of course, the dirtiest of the dirtiest, Dirty Derek. I'm doing good. I'm also hanging in there a little to the left. I knew it. I knew <laughs> it. I'm going to put the mic down now. Uh, that's right. Guys, um, we don't have to get too much into it, but how did, how you know, 2020 is off to a good movie start, I think. So with some trailers that are that are coming out, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Have you seen? A, I mean, I was going to talk about in the horror one, uh, but uh, uh, Bigfoot. I haven't seen Bigfoot one. Yeah, the Bigfoot trailer looks so campy and so awesome, and it's going to suck so much. It's going to be good. I actually haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. I didn't even know there was a Bigfoot movie. Yeah, it's legit coming out. It's legit. Look at me, bad. But a anyway, le- le- a legitimately bad movie. So here, here's a real random. So uh, Love random. I went into I had to run errands, some crazy errands, uh, but uh, to get things. Doesn't matter. That's uh, uh, not uh, not not. We're running errands. Progress. You're running. We're running errands, and I went to. Um, I hadn't been to a Borders in forever. Barnes and Nobles. Bar- Barnes and Nobles. That was like at Borders. And, and I used to go bankrupt. religiously when I uh, for years. It didn't even really matter where I'd go. I'd always go to Barnes and Noble and check out their magazine section. Yeah, I'd read the Fangoria because they didn't I didn't want to pay the price for it. Exactly. Well, I well, actually would buy. I would either buy a uh, Horror Hound. I'd buy uh, Rue Morgue. I'd buy Fangoria. I'd buy. Cinema Fantastique. I'd go buy all these magazines, and I realized I hadn't bought a, like a actual one, one thing that I and I saw a post about this online. There are no more wrestling print magazines anymore. They're all out. They're no longer published. PWI doesn't come out with their not anymore. They are officially out of business. Wow. They may do an annual. I but, think they might do the top five hundred. Yeah, they'll do an annual, but there's no longer a quarterly. What about WWE? I don't think the WWE magazine exists either. I mean, as far as I know, right. I read this thing online, but I, I hadn't seen them either. I go, you know, like, it's been a while since I've looked. But Going like, to Walmart tonight. Yeah. Sad day in America, people. But yeah, I mean, but I used to day. love magazines. And one thing I used to love about magazines. I love magazines, too. Especially like Fangoria back in the day was like, it was the way you'd hear about upcoming movies. You, they'd show you one little photo, one little lascivious photo, and you'd be like, some gnarly image, and they'd be like, I gotta see this movie, and be super excited. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have access to trailers and stuff, all that. Yeah, we didn't have fucking trolls either. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> trolling the internet, <laughs> ruining shit for people. Hey, did y'all see any movies uh, from the last time we recorded till now? We've, I've seen yeah. a few things, yeah. Okay. See, I just came, I was just saying, I just came for the movies. Oh, did you? I yeah. wanted to go see uh, the underwater movie. And did you like it? With, uh, I actually really did. I was super surprised because Kristen Stewart is, is not my cup of tea. Um, I think she can be great. Yeah. I think she was the perfect um, Joan Jett. And then actually really liked the Runaways movie. Yeah. I actually liked the, everything about it. Um, but I thought she was great. I, she's perfect Joan Jett. But yeah, I have a thing with her. I don't... I find her very hit or miss. We'll yeah. just say that. I will say this, this was a hit. Uh, I was really worried that they would... I don't want to talk about this here because oh, I, yeah. I, it, I think it's more of a, the Texas podcast massacre. Yeah, tip, tip, I don't know. I, I think it would. I, I actually Trying would see it more like uh, underwater, like sci-fi. That's what more I like got. a Leviathan type. Um, you know. Which is what we, I've been wanting. One of those. I love Leviathan. Yeah. I love the Abyss. I love it was, like it was good. So three things I liked about it. One, I was really worried they were going to try to turn her into the next like Sigourney Weaver, which is what the trailer makes you think. But they didn't. Good. Um, two. They fucking just jump right into the action, like good, like five minutes into it, and everything's blown up. <laughs> I like so it, yeah. I love that, and uh, and the monster is pretty badass, actually. Like I was pretty surprised. Like you think it's one thing, but it's actually something very different. Oh, interesting. Um, so I was I was pretty surprised, um, and obviously they very much segued into like leaving it open for a, a sequel. sequel. Um, but yeah, actually, and, and some of the people that survived, I, I did not think they were gonna. Right. Make it more than like five minutes in the movie. So I was like, all right. Um, and no, I'm not talking about T.J. Miller. <laughs> so, spoiler. Um, but it was it was actually pretty it was actually pretty decent. Um, 
So I, I was pretty nice. I'm, uh, I'm, that's exact. That's all I need to hear. I'm gonna go see that. That's um, good. I did read about a, a movie that's coming out with uh, Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving called uh, Oh, the Bo- Big Bo- da- Oh, Bochum Gun. <laughs> Bochum Gun. Yeah. Uh, it is about a guy. Of course, uh, oh, I'm working on it. Yeah, it was I was reading it on BloodyDiscussing.com, but it seemed like more of a actually it's about a kind of a computer nerd who gets uh, sucked into a uh, real-life, uh, like, assassination game. And Samara Weaving is, like, the um, the best assassin, like, in the game. But he doesn't know that he's, like, playing in the game. So, you find the, the, true name, the true name of it, because I just read about it. I, I don't think I'm spelling it right. I got book hand uh, guns. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Contact us. Book, book, <laughs> book, book end guns. Uh, book it's, and oh, guns? Oh, I'm sorry. It's guns akimbo. Guns, yeah, of Kimbo, uh, slice, uh, yeah, mm. it, yeah, <laughs> guns of Kimbo slice, Kimbo, <laughs> hey, welcome to the gun show. Oh, guns uh, of Kimbo, yeah. I got you. Okay, uh, all right. So, description is a uh, Miles nerdy existence as a video game developer who takes a dramatic turn when he inadvertently gets caught in as a next contestant in his schism. It's S K I Z M underground gang live streaming real life death matches. And while Miles excels at running away from everything, it will not help him outlast Nyx, which is Samara Weaving, a top killer in her game. So, I was like, I'm you, a, you're a big uh, Samara Weaving fan, right? Yeah. I think you've said that before. Yeah. yeah, she's hot. Sounds cool, though. I mean, I definitely want to check it out. Yeah. There's, um, I was actually going to look it up, but I, um, I'm blanking on the little, the little gentleman. Um, Oh my God, uh, uh, Frodo, Frodo Baggins, Elijah oh, Woods, Elijah Woods, Woods, who's a giant horror fan, by the way. I'm um, literally googling him right now for okay. a movie he's going to be in. Wait, was that the one with he goes to see his yeah. his dad? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, that trailer looks gnarly. I, I, dude. I have it written down, but I can't find my uh, my notebook. Ill prepared, I tell you. I know this is uh, a real professional podcast. Real professional, yeah. But he goes visit. Uh, first of all. That that uh that bowl cut. That, honestly, I get Daniel Radcliffe and and, and uh, uh Bill uh, <laughs> Bill Bobbins. Yeah, they mixed up a lot. Elijah yeah. Wood. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, so he goes visits his dad wearing his bowl cut and like you think it's gonna be like this cool like hangout time catch up and it's a little weird, but then like I don't know they they sus- they, they kind of like in, like uh, imply that his dad's like a shady dude. Yeah. Maybe, he's like, like a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's, it, I mean, literally, the movie is, is, called, is it called Big Daddy? Come to Daddy. Oh, Come to Daddy. That's come what Apex Daddy. Twin, the Apex Twin, Twin song. song. Yep. Yeah, but I, I don't. I doubt that that song's going to be in there. It's too cliche. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, yeah, it's one of those films that doesn't outright look like. And it definitely can see like they watched those, a few seventies films, like you know that it's like it. It's like a horror movie thriller psychological mm-hmm. draw like there's a lot of elements going on which i, I appreciate i think it could yeah. be good um you know, I, does he have a bowl cut or does he have that fucking stupid caesar haircut no it's, it's like, like weird bowl he's yeah. like a monk it, yeah it's like but it's it's a bowl cut but where it's shorter in the front and longer in the back so it's like a almost like a bird bowl uh, cut uh, it's like a prof- uh, it's like a, a bunklet it's like, like, <laughs> yeah it's like a professional mullet yeah it really it well re- I, you know what it just looks like a, a, it looks like a douche it's a mullet for honest, like a monk and I, a mustache if i was 10 years younger I would totally, not even just a mullet. I'm talking straight up uh, Lars Ulrich, 86, super long hair, but like the short bangs in the front. Feathered. Maybe. Well, he didn't really, didn't really feather. They were, they were, it was just more like naturally. Yeah. He's Europe, he it was, was the curls he before was, he went He was bald. European. So I, I mean, I don't know what age has to do it. I feel like you could still do it. I and, did, but. Oh, just know. wait for a couple of more months, gentlemen. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> I think it's too, the, the, I want the dangly earring, but I'm just too old. <laughs> Why do I want that so bad? Honestly, I, I want to lose him. weight. I want to lose weight and just get one like eight, like Shawn Michaels. You know, uh, yeah. it is, I just want to Dude, live and live in synthwave my, music too. My, my friend <laughs> makes she does all these hand sculptured or uh, she designs jewelry uh, and um, she does like little skulls, little daggers, little da- like all these cool like eighties kind of like hard rock metal yeah. kind of dangly earrings. And I'm like, I want to wear every single one of them. Anyways. I want to wear your earrings, baby. I know. <laughs> I want to wear those earrings. You know, this isn't going off the rails of going commando. I think we just we just wing it, wing it, and they call it a different show name. Well, all right. So <laughs> I, we're, 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 I get ties ties in. So yeah. So, but anyways, I'm down. Uh, either way, I'm having fun. That Guns and Kimbo movie. 
uh, sounds a lot like the Running Man. If somebody kind of really put in a life and death uh, hunter hunty game. I will say those kind. Of, well, we'll talk about when we get to the movie, but I do so love uh, when we get to it. I'll let you when we uh, eventually. We'll what else we got to get to? Well, can we also talk about some movies right, we right. saw? Okay, and other yeah, things. Okay, okay. Is that okay? Can I do that? <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I, I know it's a little old. Damn it! Uh, I saw Black Klansman finally. <laughs> oh, it's a good movie. Yeah, it was really yeah, good. It's a good movie. Um, I think probably Spike Lee's best in like twenty years. I think I think I think we got shorted on on, on the ending. I mean, it was whatever. I get it. Yeah. You know, make a stand. But, I mean. It's it's like based off of the historical. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I know what you're saying, but yeah. but yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it was great. I think uh, Adam Driver. Uh, Adam Driver's amazing. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I really like. He's Kylo Ren. He such a unique. He can play weirdo, nerdy, and tough guy. Like he's a weird dude. Like he's a weird dude. But he's I dig a it. Gangly motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. He's a legitimate you know, marine. Like he's like you know. Speaking of Adam Driver, I'm glad I brought up the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's something I really wanted to talk about. Did y'all watch the Golden Globes at all, or did y'all see like the important stuff of it? I did not watch. Only it those much. Hulu wins. A wink. <laughs> Cha ching. Um, I uh, watched a few of it. Yeah. So, uh, 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 Gervais, uh, Ricky Gervais, yeah. his opening monologue. Like I, I never thought about how cool. I mean, how how like contradicting like Hollywood really is. As far as like, oh, that's no, I mean, you know, all the China- here's the thing is though, and that's why, and somebody even pointed out the Ricky Gervais himself saying, I guess because Ricky Gervais isn't as like, well, he's kind. Of, anyways, he's not full of it. Here's though. the thing is, if you're going to be rich in any way, you are and try to fight for human rights, you are a hypocrite. Ultimately, somebody who's making you wealthy is doing terrible shit. That's just the way it goes. Like it, yeah. it's like. That's not. That's a stone that's never going to be fully like uh, rolled down the hill. It's ne- it's never going to be. You can't change it. It's part mm-hmm. of, like it's part built into capitalism. No, that's yeah. I totally agree with you. As a matter of fact, it just reminds me of like this conversation I had a while back with somebody when they were talking about like how much they were going to boycott like Harvey Weinstein and like just boycott him, boycott all stuff. It was like right around the time the Nike sneaker thing. Mm-hmm. That was gone. People were boycotting Nike, and I'm like, you can't fucking boycott Harvey Weinstein. You know why? Because you would never watch another movie again. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, that would be the thing. Is like you can any, only watch any... movies made in 2019. <laughs> yeah, <or later. laughs> like I mean, like or like movie forward. And even then, like I mean, just everything's so interconnected in Hollywood. Um, I always joke around. I, I as much as I love this podcast, I hope I hope it never gets too big because we insult a lot of people on yeah. here. Green Day will never open up for us, people. <laughs> ever. But you're I'm, I'm fine with that. Sorry. Anyways. I like Green Day. I know you do. But um, I okay. still like you. That's that's I appreciate that. I like you for not liking Green Day. That's okay. <laughs> Look, um, on that tip, though, yeah. one of the things I was going to talk tip. about. Just, but dude, just, just the tip. You were trying to force the cock talk, and I am going to. Uh, <laughs> He's like, don't force the cock Cock, 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 cock. I'm zipping zip up my fly and putting the cock away. <laughs> All right. On that note, though, yes. On that so I actually had a nightmare. No nightmare. That's a little strong word. I had a stressful dream, uh, not last week, but the week before, that due to this show, we were getting death threats because of things I had said on the podcast. People specifically hated ah! us. I cannot wait for that day. I know. And I felt bad. I like, I have made it. We've made it, ladies I've and gentlemen. Made it. Witness protection. Here I come. Pure, the pure, I have to say, though, too, the pure arrogance to think that... <laughs> Somebody would care enough to want to kill kill me over anything. Don't, don't sell don't yourself. Sell, don't, don't sell yourself, yourself short. short. People want to kill you. Want, for yeah, that's true. I, I have people day to day that want to kill me. So not, they just don't go the effort of writing I mean, letters. I always, I always think I piss people off at least like once a day. So well, like, oh, trust happen, me. Feel like, there's yeah. people out there trying to get me too. You know. That's right. They're nudge, all, nudge, all, wink, all wink. Trying to get, <laughs> all trying to, it's all trying to get us. Um, but yeah, yeah so maybe, maybe someday we will. We will. We will have that, that dream. That day, that, you know, I hope it gets to that point where, like, I can't believe you said that about me. It's like, dude, it's a fucking podcast. Get over. We're joking. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like it's your trust. Yeah. And anyways, you not listen to other podcasts? Anyways, the best reason to get to a million viewers, listening viewers, is just solely for the fact that we can get James to change his tattoos from Love Cats to Love Cocks. Uh, you gotta, we still, we still gotta watch the Cats movie. I want to. I still want oh, to do okay. it. I was this close. Like I was literally this close to like. I just one had day. this fancy of being the. I was actually. This is a true story. I, was I literally went to go see Black Christmas again. I just couldn't bring myself to do it again. Oh I got you to, saw Black Christmas again over I, cats. I, I got to the theater and I was like, I just can't. <laughs> I, can't I can't feel that way about cats. <laughs> I had this whole fantasy played out in my head where I was going to go to the theater 
in my finest cat sweater. No. Face painted like a cat. No, stop. With some stuffed animal cats and just sit in the audience in like a psychopath <laughs> and see if anybody like... You know, I, I would go, I would seriously go with you if you did that. But you have to begin and end every sentence with meow. Oh, that's right. Right, meow? No, right, right, meow. Like, right, meow. I would even buy her a ticket. I'd be like, it's a, yes. very, it's a very special day for a very special boy. Meow. 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 I would literally just run it up. <laughs> this is the night episode. We were recording at night. I didn't know it's going to be even better. It's going to be oh, which man. Always off, off the rails. Don't, don't, so, don't worry, folks. He's new here. So let's... <laughs> let's uh, Let's bring it back to movies. Uh, I did one of the watch. was a movie. <laughs> well, I'm saying. I know. I it's know, true. I know. Okay. What, what, did you, what did you watch? So I, I've been on. A, was on a kick uh, to watch. So fully heartbroken. I really wanted to watch after watching The Mandalorian because there's so much reps. Lone Wolf and Cub. And then a very beloved series of films called Lone Wolf and Cub about this samurai who wanders the land in this ronin, um, which is a wandering uh, like, um, who basically wanders the land with this little baby in a cart who just kills fools. Um, it's a great, it's a great, and I went to go watch it and I realized that my Criterion collection, I bought, let a friend borrow back in California and I'm never probably going to get it back. That fucking asshole. So I'm super bummed, but so... I was like, I needed my uh, samurai movie fix, my Chibata uh, movie <laughs> fix, swordplay films, um, and I forgot <laughs> that there was a this movie adaptation of this movie called um, Blade of the Immortal, which is based off of this manga I used to love back in the late '90s and early thousands, um, and it's a Takahashi Miike Takashi Miike film. Um, and I was really interested in seeing it when it came out in 2017, but I never got around to it. It's actually on, uh, it's streaming, I saw it on Hulu, but I don't know if it's from like um, Showtime or whatever. Gotcha. But, anyways, yeah. but I love the comic, and I really, like I said, to, to co- I'm going to put this on, This I don't know if I'm the first person to ever say this, but I'm going to go on record and say Takashi Miike, I think, is the Japanese John Carpenter. In the sense that like he has some hits and misses, but he has done across the board, no matter what the genre is, he still has a very distinct style, a distinct level of brilliance. He's hit or miss, and that's because he tries things. Anyways, but Takashi Miike hasn't been in form in a few years. Like, he hasn't done, like, a movie that was, like, you know, in the same level of, like, say, like, Audition or Each of the Killer or, you know, the, the Dead Alive films. Um, but so I watched this because I didn't, I heard nothing. I just saw a trailer for it a, year, a few years ago. It was coming out, but I didn't hear anybody say anything about it. So I assumed it was shit. I fucking loved it. First of all, it's very faithful to the comic, um, which if that, if you're a fan of the comic, then, you know, that's important to you. But it's just a film. It's great. It's as a Takashi Miike film. It's great. Right. The cinematography is really interesting. Uh, the violence is sublime in the way that Takashi Miike has always been, like an artist of violence, um, but yeah, if you like samurai movies and stuff, like with like it's a samurai movie. Long, so I'm not going to give you the the full thing, but the whole story is is this guy. Um, he's a he's a samurai. His his uh, lord tells him to go kill this corrupt, uh, this other corrupt, you know, uh, uh, shogun, and turns out that he was lied to. He, he it's his lord was the one that was corrupt, and he ended up actually killing his sister's husband. She goes mad, so instead of committing seppuku like he a normal samurai would, he he's basically left. He feels guilty, so he's left to take care of his basically insane little sister because you know she lost her mind from grief. Mm-hmm. Anyways, long story short, he becomes immortal, and uh, it's a, anyways it's it's a badass movie. If you like swordplay movies, if you like samurai movies, if you like <laughs> badass action films, if you like Takashi Miike movies, like. I was really, I was so blown away. I'm actually, I finished watching it and I think I'm actually going to rewatch it tonight to sort of like reabsorb it. But yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't, nice. haven't seen it, if, if listeners, if you like, uh, and what was it called again? Blade of the Immortal. Blade, Blade of, of the, the Immortals. Immortals. Your okay. recommendation from James Dean himself. Okay. I feel like like your movies are so refined when you watch them. I'm just giving you credit. Like I feel like an exquisite you palette. Things. I watched both crank movies. <laughs> 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 Does it I take a lot there? I, 
I just wanted to watch something that was batshit crazy, and that and that movie's fucking batshit. I've crazy. never seen the second. I really like the first one. I never saw the second. The second one, one is even more insane. That's, that's what my friend Heath um, said. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'll say if Jason Statham made more movies like that, I would be such a bigger fan. Add a note. If Dwight Yoakam made more movies like that, yeah, Dwight, Dwight Yoakam just needs to make so more movies. So underrated yeah, fucking actor, he's so man. So good. So good. I mean, he's doing blow off a uh, off a stripper's ass, and uh, you get me Dwight Yoakam, yeah. Tom Waits in a movie. I mean. That's good stuff. Henry Rollins, you know, Any former singer. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be great. Um, you yeah. Can pop. yeah, all four of those guys in one movie. I haven't seen it in a while, but that movie is just, uh, it's just really fucking insane. Um, Fuck yeah, it's a great movie. Right. Yeah. It's such well, a the, stupid. The, the premise is that he has like a plastic heart or like an artificial. It's heart. It's basically like speed on the but second if, one, right? If yeah. it was an artificial heart, uh, or yeah. like a yeah, yeah. So, so he has to get like well, cranked so every yeah, fucking the first sixty one, minutes. Like a uh, deadly neurotoxin, and he's got to like keep, keep it, it keep his now. keep it out. Ele- uh, Podcast. Yeah, what weird. are you doing? Yeah. Um, so at the, at the end, you know, he, uh, he jumps. He. Um, Rob, but you know the end. He like is like, calls his wife. Yeah, he calls girlfriend. his girlfriend. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, babe. Sorry, babe. Splat, and obviously we know if that was real, that it would be a uh, pavement meet. Um, but he didn't. He just bounces, and so like stupid. his his super adrenaline heart uh, is like supercharged. And so the the next one is the uh, it's like older Asian gangster wants to. Uh, First, they want to they steal his heart, and they give oh, him that's an artificial thing. heart. So they, uh, while well, he's in a coma, and they, you know, give him like a battery backup pack, and uh, they also want to steal his dick too. Apparently, so it's like searches in there trying to like look at like to steal his dick, uh, but he wakes up and he, he kicks their ass before he steals the dick. Like you can take my heart, but you can't take my penis. <laughs> you can't take my Jared Leto size wang. Uh, that's that's that's. That's kind of, that's good. Yeah. That's impression, I mean, it's the impression I got is that it was big. It was like you know, the nurses like the, the oh. Chinese, Chinese nurses just looked at, like looked at I've never seen Jason kind of did one of those, shorts. They did one of those. Whoa, <laughs> you know, kind of. Um, but anyways, yeah, he gets he gets to like the really low power battery pack that he has to keep like supercharging like every few minutes. Yeah, he's like. Puts you know the clamps on his nipples and telling him, like, oh he has to stay excited has, right so he ends yeah. up like boning his yeah. chick or whatever he does yeah he, I mean he does I think he just likes to do that like, <laughs> like, he does it oh, yeah. for fun oh yeah but like yeah he, he finds his his girl because he's been under coma and she's wearing a strip club and he goes and fucks that up and it's just this battle royale and the guy the uh, guy he threw out of the plane. At the last one is survived but it's only his head <laughs> it's in this like big glass I think I saw tag. that in like, like a, it's yeah. like. <laughs> Jesus did, Christ! Like, a robot voice, and then like the—is this a fucking trauma film? It, it kind of is because then like the, the the twin brother to his assistant, who's also like a gay party DJ, uh, party boy, and then he's like he's there, and he's helping him. Out. I don't know. I, I lose track. Watch those movies. I fucking lose track of what's going on. I just like it's so mind numbing. There's a lot it, of boobs it, it, and yeah, like uh, a lot of wieners and a lot of. <laughs> A lot of action. What kind of movie is that? <laughs> <laughs> Crank yankers. Yeah, <laughs> Wankers. Uh, right. Can we talk about how... So, <laughs> Jason yes, we Statham... Can. Yes, we can talk about it. ...kind of broke out in Snatch. Yeah. Yes. Which is a fucking great movie. Yes. That's right. But that's a film full of... One character is more badass than the last character they introduced, and it's a series of badasses. Yeah. The least badass person in the whole movie is Jason Statham. Yeah. He's the only dude in that movie who's not like a total hard ass. And then, then he became the transporter, and that dude was a fucking like diver. He wasn't like a martial artist. No, he just transitioned into being like some like action. Yeah. It's the weirdest he, thing. And then he was in the uh, he was in the Italian job. Yep. Yeah. Two, which uh, the best part of that movie is Seth Green making fun of Jason Statham. Yeah. I do his voice like, oh, I'm handsome, bro. Like, oh, sure, you'd like to take your pants off for me. Um, oh, Seth Green. Yeah. But, uh, I used to see Seth Green uh, 
at the Egyptian, like he must have lived near the Egyptian Theater in LA because every time, like, oh wait, they're they're doing a, a showing of the original Superman movie. And, Can't hardly wait. And and uh, Richard Diner's going to be there. Oh look, Seth Green is there. Oh, they're showing you know THX. Not, and he's whatever. like he's ready to like robot chicken. I was, say, I was like, dude, 40. and he is a he's shorter than you think he is too. Oh wow, well, I knew, which I figured he was really short because I remember him in a lot of movies. He's so tiny. He was tiny. He's a tiny little person. Yeah, he, play, he, he was, was, a, he nice was, guy. He was like, in the original. Uh, he seemed like a super nice guy. Um, he, he's been in everything. Yeah, he's he was in Birds of Paradise. He was, with, in, yeah, he was in it. Uh, yeah, he was. He was Richie Toto. Yeah, he was Richie. Yeah, he was. He was Richie. Beat I used to Richie. have loved him man, for years. He was a uh, he. Um, Love my family guy. Uh, I have a thing for Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, so you oh, can't hardly wait. Yeah. He was in. But they were also in. They played brother and sister in this movie called Birds of Paradise. Uh, which is a very weird television series. Do you ever... Yeah. With the uh, red-headed dude from 30-something. Yeah. Played their dad. Do you ever see that Jennifer Love Hewitt movie? Um, when uh, Shooter, Shooter McGavin, the guy from uh, uh, Billy Madison's in there too, where they locked the uh, they locked the parents... Oh, Jennifer Chili plays Jennifer uh, Love Hewitt's mom. Oh, what? And they locked they lock the parents in the, the basement until they can all get along. Oh, I... It was the stupidest movie yeah, ever. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah it was dumb. Like, anyway, I just wanted to talk about the like, hairstyles in that movie. It's like the Parent Trap too. Yeah, it was kind of like Parent Trap, but they locked him in the basement. Mm, um, it had like all star cast. It had um, oh, what's that dude's name? Man, he was in uh, uh with Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson. Um, uh, a few the men. Yeah. He was a comedian, but he's, he plays a serious. I know. Um, you're Pollock, talking, uh, Cuba, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. No, no, no. no uh, yeah, Kevin Pollock. Kevin Pollock. Yeah, he's a Kevin Pollock's in that ass movie. Anyway, I'll, I would have a let down. I don't have more details on it. I thought y'all would have known. I'm trying to look it right now. Okay. Well, um, I mean. So Kevin yeah. Pollock and, t- and, t- and type in Jennifer Ann. Love you. Um. I, I have saw you seen a this? Long, long time ago. So the cast is incredible. So Sigourney, uh, Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt play a mom and daughter con artist duo, and they basically go around. They seduce old rich men um, to That's steal true. their inheritance. Um, it is one of the first off. There's this. There's the. There's a scene where basically. Jennifer, like, so, um, Sigourney Weaver, the movie opens up Sigourney Weaver just uh, seduced and married Ray Liotta, who's, like, this, like, um, like, this, like, small business owner, like, this, like, I don't know, he's, like, a, they, I don't know, he's, like, a small business owner. Anyways, but, um, Jennifer Love, who plays his secretary, so he just marries, and he doesn't know that they're mother, because they're a con artist. She oh, plays her secretary. Oh, yeah. But, like, there's a scene where she basically seduces him, and then Sigourney Weaver just happens to walk in. But it is one of the most, like, exciting scenes. Like, so, here's the deal. It's, 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 All my life, my teenage it's, it's, it's life. Titillating. Yeah, well, That's a great my word. teenage life. Yeah, this is going to really make me look really weird. Er. <laughs> Weirder. <laughs> like, I, like, you know, like, growing up as a kid, as a teenage kid, you're like, man, I want to see that actress's boobs. That was top of the list, and she's never incredible. happened. She's yeah. incredible. Never ever yeah. happened. Yeah. So anyway, I digress. Um, um, there's a one. There, so one of my favorite things, in, <laughs> and it's got to be one of my favorite lines in just cinema. There's a sequence towards the, end of the movie because at one point, like spoiler, alert, they sort of like Rayleigh finds out he was conned, but they sort of like con him into like sort of helping them. Um, uh, spoiler alert: He really doesn't. He ends up, um, you know, marrying Sigourney Weaver at the end. They do Aww. But so he, but he's basically like they're he they're all like basically they go to this wedding and he's like he's like undercover or whatever and like he's like drinking something and this guy's like, hey, what do you do? He's like, I'm a college I'm a college teacher. And the guy goes, oh really? What do you teach? He's like, I don't know college shit. What are you a fucking biographer? <laughs> and it's the the way Ray Liotta just says it is the funniest fucking line because he seems so legitimately angry and like get away from me. Speaking of, of Ray Liotta, I also uh, this week watched Observe and Report. I love that movie. <laughs> it gets it's so, so underrated. Movie. It is. It is probably one of my by far one of my favorite Seth Rogen movies. It's so uh, depressing. It is so depressing. Yet it's so funny. Funny. Yeah. It's perfect. He's so optimistic. Um, and you can totally tell it was meant for Danny yeah. McBride. Oh yeah. 
Um, is that who the original person was like? That's for? who they wrote for. And then oh. Brad's like, I've been playing too many of these characters because it's uh, his whole you know writing crew. Yeah. Like, so David, or, yeah, David Gore Green and those all those dudes yeah. wrote it, and he's like, yeah, I can't do this. I, I've just been this character too much. That's what he's still playing, though. But that but again, at the time he was trying to do others. Yeah, stuff. and so Bad Lieutenant was great in it. Yeah, no, yeah. he was great. Yeah, just the whole cast is great, but yeah. Ray Liotta is so fucking yeah. perfect. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and Anna Faris too. It's like the annoying uh, perfume counter girl. Yeah. Oh, like, she's so hateable. Yeah, but like, oh, she's like my first seats with at dinner, and he's like taking his like mental health medication. She's like, Roddy, you're holding out on me. <laughs> give me. Can we also talk about the flasher me. in that movie? Oh my god, Jesus oh Christ! Oh my just, god, that dude's hanging thumb through the whole movie. There's, <laughs> just love it. It's like. <laughs> This guy's flashing his dick <laughs> all over the ball. I like how he was dressed like The Rock, though. Seth Rogen, that old school Dwayne no. Johnson photo yeah. with the, oh. like, the turtleneck. Turtle and neck and the gold chain. Necklace yeah. on the outside. And the, and, and the mom in that movie, too. Uh, <laughs> oh, that movie's so... It, and people hate it, that movie. It is, uh, what? Okay, oh, so what's... which one do you prefer? Observer and Report or, or Paul Blart? Well, that's the thing. is People like... There are literally people like, Oh, I didn't think Paul Blart... Mall Cop is funny until I saw Observe and Report. They Mall Cop is but, fucking horrible. Um, oh yeah, of course it is. It's dude, his written report is fucking art. What is the um he's like Fuck Kevin James. I forget the actor's name, but he plays Kevin like James. he like basically plays like the bat like he's like, Ronnie, I love you. Oh, like, ba- he, oh uh Michael Pena. You might Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's so like, goddamn good he, in that he, movie. He's like, it's like Ronnie, you just gotta, I gotta take you on the ride with me, you know, because uh, you're my best friend. It's Dennis yeah. Ferrante. I yeah, know, dude, it's so good. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad you like because that's a movie I love. That movie, and yeah, it's a good one. He's like, you're my dude, you're my dude too. <laughs> I love actually watching that and foot this way like back to back. You know what that pisses me off? I'm, I'm mad that Danny McBride didn't play that. Like all his successful characters are based off his, his who an extension of who he really is. I know is. because in, at that time he was trying to do other things. He just. Kept falling back in the game. You mean that Alien movie? And that was it? The only serious role? No, he did one other one. He he did with uh, with Emma Stone. He did one with Emma Stone where he was in Hawaii. I think he had just done uh, Your Highness and was like, I can't do it anymore. He's like, God, if I have to work with James Franco again. They're beautiful together. And and, uh, what was it? uh, This is the end? (laughs) Beautiful. I just, I. Dude, and again, he is the best thing in that movie. Like, I love Damon Brand, anyways, but he's the best thing in that movie. Oh, yeah. I, I I didn't care for that movie, but and, yeah, because the cannibal at the end, which is yep. great, and, and then these guys, guys give the Channing Tatum. Oh my god, dude, like, that was yeah, that was like guys. He's like so worth it. Well, he's he's like he's like I love Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum, Young. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> but him and Michael Sarah, like probably yeah. the oh, best. Oh, Michael Sarah, oh, he's just in so little, but yeah, he's he just like such a piece of shit. Who asked my fucking phone? He's like, oh, oh, it's here. Sorry, guys. You know that. Um, you know that scene when Rihanna slaps him? Yeah, she really slapped. She him. really slapped, like because yeah. he's like, just go for it, and she like, I guess it like popped his like ear drum. Oh or, shit! Or, yeah. like he, yeah. So I mean, he's like, like, it's like the scene where he's getting a blowjob and he's like, he's drinking a juice box. I'm exactly. like, exactly. Like, so fucking. It's so, so creepy. Like, 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 no, like, that's not creepy. That's fucking pimp. He's like, like, no, it's he's like mad he's, pimp. He's like, you want some, baby? <laughs> yeah. God, we love it. <laughs> bucket goal, bucket list right there. <laughs> that's, that's, I love juice it. boxes of blowjobs and blow. A juice J. <laughs> a, ju- a juicy J. A juicy J. That's a new term. It's called a juicy J. Dude, I, gotta, uh, I'm, I'm, I need to work that into my life somehow. <laughs> like, hey, baby. <laughs> I'm going to go through my uh, my wish list here. Juicy J. I do love juice boxes. Dude, uh, right? Yeah. Juice boxes are highly underrated. Juice boxes, yeah, man. Get, get, get me a Yoohoo any day of the week, man. I kind of wish Michael Sarah's like that in real life. Like, I really hope he is. Um, so my... Uh, Shout out to my... I can't believe I've never brought up my my main man, Casey O'Connor, on this. He's a, Shout out, Casey. He's... Um, anyways, he was actually... This is a movie called Paper Heart, which was like him and... Um, uh, what is her name? Sounds familiar. Asian comedian, actress, like really weird looking chick. Uh, Kwan? Oh, anyways. From Pitch Perfect? But he, he, my friend Casey worked on the... Worked with, they, they had a really small crew and he's actually... If you see it, they go to dinner and they, like there's like they're in the diner and then there's like some dude's bald head like right oh, behind her. Uh, the chick from Juno. Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. Charlie Yee. Charlie Yee. But um, so my uh, my homie Casey worked on the film. He said they were both super sweethearts. So yeah, I was like, that's nice. That's pretty cool. That's Happy good. Day. I mean, this was then, so they may be mad 
you know, coke addict uh, lunatics now. Sorry, so. Well, let's hope so. Anyways, Anyways. Um, all those people look the same in the movie, and they look like they don't have any chins. Right? <laughs> Probably. Dude, Martin Starr. So, I was actually was so just, amazing. Bill Haberchuk is the. I think honestly, this is hype. I know this is going to sound hyperbolic, but in the history of television characters, there might be char- television characters as good as Bill Haverchuk from Freaks and Geeks, but there's none better. Bill Haverchuk, the character of Bill Haverchuk, played by Martin Starr in Freaks and Geeks, is the most perfect, fully complete original character in television history. I, I haven't seen anyone like Guilfoyle either, though. From but that's what I'm saying. That's why I really like, because those are two opposite characters. Right. He's just so stereotyped, stere- like typecast and stereotyped because of his look. Yeah. But dude, like, that character, Guilfoyle and Bill Haberchuk could not be more opposite right. people. <laughs> but dude, there's a whole sequence in, uh, you guys, you, please tell me you've watched Freaks and Geeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's that right. sequence when he's just, it's the whole episode is him, like, where it shows that he's basically like a latchkey kid. And he goes home, and he's just, like, watching, like, comedy. And the whole thing is this, I forget, is it, like, The Who, or... I think in the original broadcast, it's some, like, epic, beautiful... I think it was The Who. Um, and he's just, like, watching TV, and it's one of the most, like, you see him as this, like... And then it's the episode where they find out that his mom is dating the coach who he hates. And it was, it's such a great episode, but he brings so much humanity to it. And you really see him. Oh, I love that shit. I can talk about, I can talk about, we could have a whole podcast just about Freaks and We Geeks. say that about a lot of things. Yeah, because <laughs> we care passionately. All day long. Um, all day long about dicks. <laughs> all day long. All day long about the, the meats. I'm going to look up, I'll look up online and see if there's a national penis day and we're going to talk about penis, celebrity penises. Let's do it. That's <laughs> I feel like you do that anyway, so I feel like there's just... Every day is National Penis Day. Speaking of penises, I wonder how big Arnold Schwarzenegger's penis is. Oh. Probably uh, big uh, enough to uh, uh, impress a I Colombian feel, housemaid. I feel, my personal opinion, for with all the roids and stuff like that, like I feel like he's probably maybe got some shrinkage. So here's... Okay, this is actually the, the, the actual... The truth about steroids is... It, it balls. It actually increases... The blood flow to the penis, which can actually cause the penis itself to actually get larger, it just causes the shr- the testicles to shrink. So then you got like so if you're somebody I'm disproportioned, just you got reverse just, Dumbo just, going just on. Just throwing it out there that you know like not personal experience. If you're all ball and not a whole lot of wang, you can even like, it out. You do some steroids. You don't even need to work out proportion. Yeah, but yeah, Jack. And, then, and you know what? I already but, have back knee. Might right. as well start. Right. <laughs> hair. Let's get the roids, people. Yeah. No, I, I just don't. want... I, I would do roids in a heartbeat if it didn't cause hair loss. Hair loss and heart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. The heart. Yeah. That's a, yeah. What I think we're, yeah. I, my I hair is too lovely. Oh, I'll, I'll have a heart attack. I just don't want to lose my hair. I don't either. <laughs> no, I think it's like, yeah, yeah. If I'm going out, I'm going with the full hair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, 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 we have good locks. Yeah, we, we got good hair. <laughs> we, have some, we have some good hair going on here. If only people could see it. Um, hey, faces wait, for radio, but oh, nice hair. So can I, I'm sorry. I know we, we I know we're going for, for a while here. All right, so I was watching. You like how real quick. You like how we tried to bring it to uh, Running Man by bringing up Arnold Schwarzenegger, and we're still got. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about Schwarzenegger. Okay, okay, okay. It's just bad. a different capacity. Okay. Um, I'm talking about the Terminator and how much. Sometimes it pisses me off when I watch it. So I, I was I was at the gym the other day, and they were playing uh, Terminator Genesis, mm-hmm. which is like the, like fifth installment or some yeah. shit like that. And, Second newest. Yeah. And they go back in time, back to 1984, and I'm like. Motherfuckers, why don't you just go back in time and kill the Skynet guy when he's a baby? Why doesn't anybody ever do that? Keep talking, I'm just playing the theme to it oh. while you're doing it. Okay, perfect. Well, I mean, it's stupid because why doesn't anybody in time travel movies, Look. period, just go back and kill the person when they're a baby? I know Future Man covers that, like it's hard to kill a baby, but I feel like for humanity's sake, I'll punt kick that fucking thing right out the window. That's me. I don't know. See, like, my thing Skynet, is... Skynet, like, boom. Well, that's the thing is, first of all, they, there's so that's many... a great theory. Okay, go ahead. There's Sorry. so many plot holes in... Time travel stories always have giant, like, lo- like gaps of logic and, pl- and, like... But the Terminator franchise has so many, which once again proves my point that the only Terminator you need to watch is the original. Everything after that sucks, and yes, I'm including Judgment Day. So. I don't disagree with you. It just annoys me. I know. That they're this advancing in the future, and they're like, we have this time machine. It's right here. Where, well, do, we go, is, where do we go back? 1984. Look, I like the 80s people. Yeah. I love the 80s. 
But if I'm trying to save humanity, I'm not going to go back to 1984. I'm going to go back to 1969 to kill that dude. I'm going to go back even one generation further and kill his fucking grandfather. There you go. Before he even has sex with his grandmother, degrade you know his father, I would to ha- fucking have him. But, but then, hold on. So, but then I'm traveling back in time to stop you because I want the Terminators to exist. Because I think a, a, a future where there's just skulls everywhere <laughs> and big machines crushing skulls is but the But it's your skull. That's the thing. You well, what if some, there was something worse than Skynet that was going to... That came out of well. Then I would it. go back and kill that fucking person too. Well, that's what the thing you wouldn't know yeah. because you 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 had to live through Skynet. Unless you're like Days of Future Past, where where you, you're Wolverine, you didn't know. Uh, I do say there's this comic out uh, called uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, um, yes. which is a great comic. Yes, hangs out with Thanos. Yeah, Maybe so Dan- the whole Thanos. thing is like so it's it's in the future and the power. Okay, so this gets we're gonna I'm only gonna say this quick, but so it's actually the Punisher becomes a herald of Galactus. He basically becomes the Ghost Rider and then is imbued with the power cosmic because he becomes Galactus's herald. Then Thanos kills Galactus, so he basically ends up following Thanos around, but then he finds out Thanos is like a piece of shit. But it was, it, long story short, he ends up going back in time to kill baby Thanos, but can't do it because it's a baby. So instead he like hangs around with baby Thanos trying to teach baby Thanos to not be a, a genocidal monster, but it's not working. Well, he can't, great... he can't because... Is that lone, he, wolf, lone Wolf and Cub again? I know exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a theme he with can. me. Man. He can't because uh, he can only use his uh, judgment on the wicked, yeah. and it's a baby. You can't do that. But a normal person? Kill that fucking baby. But then he like he finds out, like, yeah, that's a whole thing. Like, yeah. um, it was a good comic. It's funny. Yeah, then Thanos it's, so, it's becoming okay. worse than what he that's right. ends up being. Exactly. So this is a silly, stupid comic, but it's fun. Let me ask you a question, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that we're talking about time travel and time travel movies. Uh, First of all, I think Interstellar got it right. I I believe that's pretty accurate if if, if it was possible. So, do you, when uh, when Terminator came back in 84, uh, was he, did he create a, 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 an alternate timeline? Or when he goes back, everything's fixed? Because well, I'm saying that whole alternate timeline thing. Because in theory, I mean, yes, you would have changed something in the past, which would have impacted the future. So, so. it doesn't impact his life then. See, I didn't even. Did you see the newest? T- t- so yes. okay, because then he wouldn't need to kill himself. I the fucking dark, love the dark fate. The I love the Terminator. I love that first Terminator. I love. The, I mean, I fucking love Michael Bean. Yeah, Linda Hamilton. I mean, fuck, I love the first Terminator. I, that's not good. We're going to turn into a Kenny Omega podcast here. <laughs> um, wrestling joke. Anyways. Um, tune in. Tune in. Um, but, you know, it's it's so perfect. And again, it takes that plot. You get enough time travel in it that it's like, okay, that's the conceit is. But once you took that into, like, explaining, like, it just, everything falls in itself. And I you know. got fucking kids, like. <laughs> John Connor. Can did, you, did you see? Uh, did you see the most recent one? That's what I'm saying. No, I didn't. I didn't well, even see Genesis because well, I can't bring well, my. I, well, it makes I me t- sad. I'll tell you if you don't mind. They fucking killed John. Uh, I did every. So everybody knows great. how much I and, hate it. And a CGI Edward Furlong yeah. gonna shotgun to the fucking. So, yeah. so what happens? So so then there is. So then there has to be alternate timelines if Edward Furlong is coming back. Well, so it yeah, it's after. So it's after the second the second one. Um this is like kind of the the past and Linda Hamilton's they she takes uh they keep saying terminators like after them and but she's getting weird correspondences to tell her like when and where these terminators are, are showing up so she can like bump them up and it just happened to be one day that she uh doesn't like do that that one comes to like falls her to Costa Rica where John Connor's like hitting on a Costa Rican girl and, like so close to, to get into play, and he got a shotgun to the stomach, and then he, and then he dies. So that's, that's why she becomes a badass, terminating hate machine. Like if she didn't have enough reasons already. Like, who for long getting a shotgun to the face? I can buy that. You know, the only thing bad about that is that that movie's not a documentary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry. you're so fucked. Did you see that photo of on New Year's? No. Of bloated Edward Furlong sitting no. next to bloated. Uh, uh, Corey Coleman? No, um, <laughs> uh, John Ron Jeremy. It's the SAS photo. No, in, like how similar it looks. Yeah, well, just how de- yeah, it's just depressing. Well, look I, it up. No, but I, I did see like see uh, somebody post on Facebook the other day. Like, which should I watch? Should I watch this movie or should I watch this movie called Zombie Kings, which literally has uh, Edward Furlong and um, what is it, Corey Feldman? 
Oh man, that is. Dude. Oh my when, god, that when, is, <laughs> when did that come I, out? And I don't know which one's a zombie, uh, solely because they both look terrible. Um, that was uh, 2013. Ew! <laughs> <Look> at, <laughs> let me see. That was the real Zombie King trick. Oh! Oh, it, okay, so what we're looking at right now is Edward Furlong next to Ron yeah. Jeremy. The Terminator. This is from uh, just do, like this, Party on New Year's. The just do a Google search. Terminator Wait, this year? I think so, yeah. Out. No. That's what all these memes kept coming up. Um, oh. we'll start, uh, yeah, uh, they were the pair were in a bar on New Year's Eve. Dude, that's the that is the fucking that is the, the aftermath of cocaine right there. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. That just fucking. That is very true. Just made my penis soft. It will. It Look, will. It does. I'm, I'm talking about the that's, picture, not cocaine. That's, oh. that's what happens when you have way too many juicy J's. <laughs> hey man, run Jeremy. Uh, anyways, let's not. Okay, oh. so we were on the Terminator. So let's talk about what we were here to talk about, which I, is which is the Running, running man. man. All right. Yes. So. Just we should consider our listeners to I some degree. I love this episode. It's my favorite episode so far. <laughs> I fucking love the Terminator too. Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, the Running Man. I love the Terminator too. Uh, the Running Man is a, such a great movie. Um, just solely for the fact that I, I think it's just a really. I always. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe I just like like really terrible television. But the idea of like this whole like gladiator style game, like the Running Man. Always interests me. It's like it's like when I watch a movie like Death Race about people like love it. Death Race. I'm like, hey, you're in prison. You're not getting out. Let them battle it to the death and see what happens. Like, I'm all I'm all for that. I, I'd rather make it competitive, in my opinion. I'll let him out if he wins. Dude, um, it's there's something about that that concept that I could I'll ne- uh, never gets old to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a, a tattoo of. I don't know if you've ever seen this because I don't really. I have a tattoo of a. Oh, it's on this arm. <laughs> of Frankenstein from Death Race 2000. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Because that's how oh, much nice. of a fan I am. Um, yes. But I love that concept. The Roger Corman's Death Race. Yes. No, I've never even seen that. I was like, not Jason Statham? I've not even seen it. Actually, I, start, I, think, I actually think it's actually really good. I started watching it for like an HBO. I watched 15 minutes and I, I got bored and changed it to something else. But, but I love the run. Richard Bachman, a.k.a. Stephen King, short story, is way more of a political, like... Yeah, and he's like in the in the short story it's based off of. He's not like some badass commando. He's like an out of work schlub who's been blacklisted. His poor wife has to go to prostitution because they're that poor. Um, so he, the Run Man is this is basically in the same vein, it, but it's like it's not it's not like a game show for you know convicted felons. It's basically like for poor people. It's like a get out. It's like here's a chance to to move up in society. Yeah. Um, so it's way more political. It has way more of that like freedom fighter aspect than the the movie. Like the movie has that where it like, becomes like a freedom fighter thing. There's that element, but it's, that's pretty much way more what the short story of the Running Man is. But it's one of those scenarios where I've read the I've read the short story. I prefer the movie. Yeah, I prefer the. Well, it's got a, such a stellar cast, right? Yeah, you have Richard Dawson. Okay, number Family one, Family Feud guy. He's yeah. great in it. Best host ever. Yes, uh, get in. Um, I mean, you have Yafit Kodo, who I love. There. You have Mick Fleetwood and fucking Dweezil Zappa. That's right. In there. On top How old was Dweezil? Mick, like, Mick, he was young. Mick, Fleet, so, Mick Fleetwood playing a character called Mick. Yeah, which is <laughs> super funny. Um, and then, of course, like, it never hurts you have Maria Chiquito Alonso. Um, so beautiful. She. Uh, Jim Brown. Jim Brown's great in it. Um, I, I always love the, uh, my personal opinion. I didn't like him as a character, but I just thought he was funny. It was Dynamo because he gets, he gets. Uh, I actually like the. I mean, the characters. You know, is a. So I like Maria Chiquito a lot. So he's like, put a battery up your ass. So you know <laughs> the part where he sings. Yeah. So that was really him. Oh. Erland. Oh, he's got a little crazy. Erland. Anyways, the guy. That guy who's he's a. I was just gonna. End. He's um. Uh, Erland von Lith. But it's like von Lith. Uh. uh Unjunde or Unjude. It's he's got some. Yeah. Anyways, he's in this movie called Stir Crazy, which is one of my dad's favorite movies. Um, my dad would. Lo- I mean, I've always loved. Um, uh, uh, um, my, my brain and names, and I was like looking at pictures of him two hours ago. Um, uh, yeah, Willy Wonka, uh, Young Frankenstein. Why am I blank? I was gonna get a tattoo. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Love Gene yes. Wilder. But my love, my dad loved. Um, uh, oh yeah, 
Stop. <laughs> and my dad loved Gene Wilder, and he loved. Um, he actually met him in. There's a hysterical story. Uh, uh, what movie is he in? Stir Crazy. Is one of the the big uh, Richard Pryor. My dad oh. was a huge Richard Pryor oh. fan. Um, in fact, my, my oh, you just said you know. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so there's this movie, the Stir Crazy. I yeah. love the toy. Um, which is it's a it's a comedy. It's like you know they had a few of those comedies. I think Stir Crazy was the best of their their comedies. But like, Erlen's in like, that. I did like Hear No Evil, See No Evil. That was a good one. Too. Yeah, I mean that one's. Yeah. Are you fucking dead? <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw it in the theater. Um, but wow. But yeah, Erlen's in that, and he plays this big ass like prison guard who sings this like I think it's like a country song. Um, but he's like this beautiful voice. I remember being like, "Well, I like this." He's this giant. Like I mean, he's legit. Like six six, three fifty. Wow. He's like he's like. He was a wrestler, but he was like a collegiate wrestler. But he uh-huh. could have told. I mean, he looked like King Kong. He's bigger than King Kong. But. He does look like King Kong, yeah. But um, but he had this beautiful voice. So, but at the time, I didn't know until like I was in my thirties. It was the same. Cause I grew up watching Stir Crazy. I didn't know that dude was Dynamo. <laughs> and, in, and in fact, I think I used to think. Do you ever see the Popeye movie? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, the the big the, and that dude was huge too. In fact, I think I was even bigger. But the guy that Popeye boxes. The oh, big okay. fat oh, old guy. Yeah, with yeah. The mom. yeah. I used to think they were the same guy, but they they weren't. But it was the, it was Dynamo. Um, uh, so yeah, but um, and then uh, Professor Tanaka. Professor Toro oh, Tanaka. Oh yeah. my god, that guy is like. I mean, Sub Zero. I mean, first time I've seen it was like a yeah. Three Ninjas. That I mean, that's I, mean, I didn't see. I mean, I didn't see Running Man for a while. Uh, but yeah, that dude's awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude, Professor Toro Tanaka. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I love it. The thing is too, like the guy um, who plays uh, Buzzsaw, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's in House Two. And he plays he's Arnold the Barbarian. Yeah, he's been in a bunch of movies. Yeah, he was a, like Gus. Uh, yeah, he was Witch. in Twins too. Yeah, and he's the bad. He's the bad guy in Twins. The yeah. the the. the and, uh, uh, yeah, he was in the Scorpion King. Yeah, he was. He's known for a lot of Sen- things. I fully Gus, full disclosure. Gus never Whistler. seen the Scorpion King. He Fuck miss, that movie. Miss much. I saw the trailer when it was coming out. And I was like, I can't watch that. Don't. Yeah. That, that's Super a stupid CGI. movie. Hey, but you Before know what? I'm ever. glad he did it. He learned the thing yeah. too. You know. And, yeah. and then he made Doom. Fuck you. That movie sucked. He ruined. Did a you good see the movie. new Doom? There's a new Doom. Annihilation. Yeah, yeah, Doom Annihilation. No. Some people say it's pretty good. I heard it's pretty good. Yeah. So it's. I think it's a Netflix original. Yeah, I think so. What? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. But uh, but yeah, Running Man. Anyways, yeah, uh, <laughs> Running Man. No, I mean, I just say, uh, yeah, I think the it's got Jesse Ventura in it. Yep. Um, that's the, and that's the thing is, I love like it predates like American Gladiators and all those things by like a few years, but it's pretty predictive in a lot of those ways. But dude, give me that show's reality. You got Fireball, you got Dynamo, Sub Zero, Buzz on like you take pro wrestling and just take up a notch of murder. Yeah, I'll watch that show. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible, but I'll watch it. That's awesome. I mean, you go outside and waver. And of course, by the way, the, can we also say the movie, obviously, too, also had... Uh, 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 I know his last name's Thornson. Uh, B- Bjorn... The, yeah, fucking the dude that's in every Arnold story. He's like best yeah. friend, that like yeah. bodybuilder, strongman guy. That like the guy who for the lo- longest time I literally thought was Arnold Schwarzenegger's like brother. Brother, in that movie. so yeah. Yeah, he's in everything. He's oh, literally in every Sven Thorson. Sven Old Thorson. Sven Old Thorson. Yeah. And he plays Sven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But he's he like, he, he, he was in, I mean, yeah, he's been in literally everything. Um, he was the, uh, he plays Sven, the uh, security guard. Yep. Yeah, which he's actually got, I love it. He's got a cool role in that. But yeah. dude, there's a moment in uh, The Running Man. It's a speech. I wish I knew it verbatim. I, I should have. But when basically like Arnold Schwarzenegger's talking to to Dawson, uh, you know Richard Dawson, uh, like you know like on camera, yeah. he's like, "I'm the rip dude, you fucking spine." There's this whole like, long, <laughs> it is the greatest. It's like a it's like a it's like a two minute like that was a good Arnold Schwarzenegger one. basically telling yeah. him how he's gonna kill him, and I remember being like, "My shout out to my my homie Casey." That's like one of his like we were growing up, we loved it, and I remember. YouTube had this like the 100 greatest lines and Arnold Schwarzenegger ever said in cinema. And I remember I started started to watch, and I was like, if that's not the number one, this line, this like list is bullshit. But I didn't think it was, I thought it was gonna be like Hasta La Vista, baby. Or nope, it was number one. And I was like, whoever made this video is my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it was like perfect. It's that's like, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, Richard Dawson was so goddamn good in yeah, this movie. He's hateable. Um, I just love which Schwarzenegger two stabs a pen in the guy's back or signing the contract. Yep. Um, too. Yeah, it was just it was just overall a great movie. It's a future I'd like to live in. Honestly, yeah. I would be there. 
And uh, so I just love when everybody starts to betting on uh, betting on uh, Schwarzenegger's character. He's like, I'll take. I'll take that Richard Baker. He's one mean he's motherfucker. motherfucker. <laughs> the old lady? Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, well, darling, you can't, we can only bet on the bet on the runners. He'd be like, don't tell me what I can't do. <laughs> exactly. You get the home kid. You get the home kid. The, the I home, love it, dude. You get the home kid. God, I love it. Yeah. You get all these prizes. Oh, I do. I honestly think, like, there is, like, probably a good, like, five years where... Every like action movie that came out was was great in some way. For me, like there's so many great action movies that even like the ones like Running Man, which doesn't yeah. doesn't get the love of like of a Terminator or Predator. Right. But I fucking hold it in the same esteem myself. I think it's I will Predator uh uh um I almost said Project Mars, that's not right. Uh uh you know, the one where he goes to the moon and uh, it's based off of the uh Good lord. The sci fi one. It's at the Guys, you're not helping me. You're just blank. For Schwarzenegger? Schwarzenegger. With that oh, head, oh, uh, oh uh, Total Recall. Total Recall. I, I'm telling you, it's the the part of my brain that I gotta get on like yeah, Jinko Maloba. Have you heard so, of uh, ginseng? I gotta get some ginseng. <laughs> I do. I'm not even kidding. But, anyways, but the, the, there's all these like beloved Schwarzenegger films, but I put like. Yeah. Like, I, again, Commando, I think is just as good as that. I think Running Man. I think even we, we talked about it before. I actually think. Uh, um, uh, Red uh, Heat is yeah. not, it's not as good, but it's like it's like it's good. It's good. Yeah, he was just the only thing he was doing was yeah. solid. What yeah. would you say your favorite Schwarzenegger movie is then? Commando. Commando. Twins. I don't know. Twins. Terminator Two. I, don't, I mean Terminator. No, Terminator Two. Ah, no. He caught you. I'm a hypocrite. I got no. you. The first Terminator tied closely with Kin- Commando. Kindergarten Cop. Okay, here's the thing. Tuba. It's not a thing, and then yeah. the whole world. Yeah. That's why it's not too, because no. it's such a yeah that and that and true lies girls, girls have peep yeah but I love yeah. true lies but that's like the movie that um, like sort of yeah saved his career a little bit because he had been making shit after shit and then with Tom Earl. and again it's a James Cameron movie so well the, you know, it is funny like after that James Cameron went to go make Titanic yeah it's not, how weird is that I know. <laughs> he always but, said he was gonna come back and do True Lies too and now he's been playing Avatar I think they're still yeah. talking about True Lies too so how can, like, can you what though? retirement First, because Arnold Schwarzenegger one he plays the villain, which is completely against type for him, and two, so Schwarzenegger is like not like if you actually look at his screen time when he's actually saying things, and it's not just like his vision where he's like fucking fixing his arm. It's very little, but when he's explaining but, Skynet, but I like... think the quintessential, <laughs> the quintessential Arnold Schwarzenegger movie has got to be Commando because it's it's really where he perfected all of his like his lines. I lied. Uh, you know, like, all of his, like, his yeah. Schwarzeneggerisms come from Commando. Yeah, I, I'm just saying I like True Lies the best. Well, I'm saying you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. That's a great movie. I, do, I mean, the thing is, again, like, I, so we're watching, this is the second Mandalorian reference I've made on this podcast. Hey, Amen. Coming from a guy that's not a Star Wars fan. Um, but everybody's just talking shit about, G, uh, is it Gina Car- Carla? Did you watch? Yeah. yeah so, but yeah. she's like the former M- former MMA fighter. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. She was. Um, oh, shit. What was she into that she was? She was like Deadpool, uh, the first oh, Deadpool movie. Yeah, I actually thought she was really hot. In that movie yeah, she's too. super. You know, yeah. she used to. She was engaged. I think they're broken up now, but to uh, Henry Cavill. Really? I was like, dude, can you imagine their kids? Jesus, that'd be some Jesus. Ubermensch kids, dude. I'm just, I'm just telling you. I'm Wrestle me to the ground. I know, day. but the thing is, like, I yeah, that's the other thing. I, cause I thought she was smoking up, but I thought like other people would be like, ooh. Just love the scene. <laughs> not to digress, but <laughs> they see Deadpool where uh, Colossus. He's like, oh, your your boob is your boob is coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, you're so sweet. And then kicks him in the dick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. That movie disrespected my favorite superhero, but. Colossus. Oh. Apocalypse. Colossus. Colossus. Oh, Peter that's Rasputin. That's what I. You made Don't a, even get me. I'll go off about you Colossus. Made, you made Colossus big, big hey, pussy. They made Apocalypse a big pussy too. No, the Deadpool movie. I'm that saying. dude is. Oh, yeah. Well, no, that's not even. Yeah, that movie was <sighs> trash. And what? A, but and Oscar Isaac too. The guy's a fucking great actor. What do you? Yeah. Do? No, they, they just they just fucked up on Apocalypse. Motherfucker looked like a goddamn Power Rangers villain. Yeah, it was best, horrible. Best sex movie, hands down, is Days of Future Past. My opinion. I was well, one. I would say the best in the universe is Logan, but yes, his future past is good. Yes, it's, it's the best, I think. I think X2 on was song, my favorite for the longest time. Yeah. 
I don't. I, as as you bad say as you it like was, X three, I'm going to get up. As you. bad as it was, I enjoyed it. Oh God! Talk about ruined. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. It's the most. Uh, t- God damn. It, yeah, yeah, it just had the least I, amount of Jubilee that's, ever. That's right. <laughs> I hate Jubilee as a yeah. movie. Was she, even in the, she was like not really even in those movies. Yeah, she's she trapped. Like a, she, she gets trapped. Yeah, but yeah, Vin, like a, yeah Benny, Benny Jones as the... Uh, as Juggernaut was as, awful. As he, the, I, I guess I'm just... This this I did like the uh, Juggernaut in the Deadpool 2 movie. Yeah, you know? that's the same. Yeah. And it was actually voiced by Ryan Reynolds, which I thought was really funny. He, he fought him himself. I like Brad Pitt in Deadpool. That's uh, cool. Yeah, he was the Invisible Man. <laughs> that was great. That's exactly how I like Brad Pitt. He was... He was uh, uh, I'm like, Peter, no. Peter, Care Bear, <laughs> Care Bear, go to the left. I love that swear, yeah. dude. That pissed off so many people, and I was like, I don't care. That was hysterical. Like, <laughs> what everybody does. Well, yeah, because everybody's like, oh, there's going to be, because, you know, like, there's characters, like, even like I love, like, Shatterstar and these, like, kind of, like, more obscure X Men universe characters. Yeah. Which is why I said to everybody, I'm like, dude, if they're throwing some of these characters in here, um, no way. I'm like, uh, that's, uh, it's probably, I mean, why, but anyways, but so, but when they actually had him, like, all get, uh, spoiler alert, like, killed yeah. uh, so easily, I know, it, yeah. I, I thought it was hysterical, and I loved how much it was pissing off nerds yeah. online. I got two things that were yeah. speaking of pissing yeah. off uh, nerds online. Jared Leto's Morbius. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, if, if there's anybody that's going to play a brooding fucking... A brooding vamp- big dick motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> vamp- vampire. Suck a vampire. That's right. Um, We're not even going to talk about vampire, vampire dick. Right. Jared Leto. Okay. So, Literally has fangs. <laughs> and then the second thing is, uh, I mean, as we come to a close here, yeah. uh, Keanu Reeves is the next Wolverine. It's a fan theory, a fan rumor. No, he's... Uh, no, he's, he's way too old. Um... I want to see him do something, but he's yeah. way too old. Bill and Ted. Um, That's what he's going to do. Mm. Uh, so here, okay. I'm going to just go off real quick. That's fine. I have this thing where all of my most... Be- so, Michael Morbius, a.k.a. Morbius Living Vampire, it was one of my favorite characters growing up. Absolutely. All the Marvel... So I have a big soft spot for the Marvel 70s horror kind of related characters. Um, uh, Jack Russell, the uh, uh, werewolf at night... Uh, which is the his name is Jack Russell and he's a werewolf. Which is a great <laughs> odd decision there, Marvel. But um, but uh, uh, whether it's you know Brother Voodoo, Ghost Rider, which is his favorite. But I loved Morbius, the Living Vampire. I thought he's. I still think he's seventy. He's the most seventies bitch in outfit. He kind of was like a member of Kiss a little bit. Um, I just love his costume. I've always loved the character. Um, but I have this thing where if I have a character I love, it's the uh, Although I did. I was very worried about the Shazam, even though he called Captain Marvel Shazam. I was worried about the Shazam movie, but it wasn't bad. But you know, but like one of my favorite characters is uh, hear, the Rhino. Hear that, listeners? It wasn't bad. I'm just going out to my friend Mike, who doesn't refuse to watch. Shazam. Shout out, Mike! Watch the damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, buddy. I have a uh, Captain Marvel. I don't. I lived on. I don't sleep this, but which one? This is no. This is Gigantor. So this uh, this is literally an Alex Ross Captain Marvel tattoo. Oh wow! That, that's how much of. A, I mean, that was. My dude, uh, the so, old CC. So basically, Pector. what you're trying to say is that uh, they ruin it for you. Well, I thought it was going to be awful. Be- so I there was only one dude in, in Hollywood I hated, and it was Chuck. I don't even. I was like, I don't know what it is about this dude. I just hate his face. So when I found, of course, he's the dude playing. But then I watched that he was in the Marvel's Miss, Miss Maisel second season, and he got like. In fact, he looked more like Captain Marvel in that series than he did in the actual movie. But. Um, you, like you know who's so the actual Captain Marvel the Shazam character that uh, I hate calling him that but uh, he was actually yeah, based <laughs> CC Beck ba- CC Beck the artist um, based him off of uh, um, and I just had his name Flubber um, the old uh, Fred McMurray yeah. he was based off Fred which is weird to think of Fred McMurray as a superhero but he kind of based his face off that so I'm still have that image in my head but anyways I don't know why I'm I'm going off on a tangent here I'm on no well, I like I like the but, more, yeah go ahead but I really I thought I was going to hate it and I didn't I I begrudgingly go it's not terrible it's not, I don't love it but it's not so you think you think uh, well speaking of you know not being terrible what do you think about you think Jared Little's going to kill it on this one well I mean I mean I, I again I don't I refuse to like comment until I've seen them like look. Is he kind of an unlikable douchebag? Yeah, he is. Like I said, everything that comes out about him, like everything that came off of the set of uh, off of Suicide Squad, and everything like, um, 
But, you know, he has proven to be a capable actor. He's, like I said, I've enjoyed him in many things in his acting abilities. Do I think that movie is probably going to be shit? Yes. Um, Look, I, I don't care what it is as long as it introduces Blade. Well, that's the thing is, excited about Blade, but um, it is not part of the MCU. It is part of Sonyverse. So it's going to be... Uh, like, like Venom. But they, it, can exactly. still, it can still do that, yeah. It'll, it's gonna be separate. They never so it's gonna Tom be. Tom Holland cannot and get if you drunk like, enough. To and if you like the fucking Venom Tom. movie, I'm just gonna shut my mouth there. But that Venom movie, I'm so glad I haven't seen that movie. I just like. I watched have it. you ever had uh, uh, painful diarrhea? Uh, every day. Oh, then yeah. Just like, and and, 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 and vaginal irritation. I, I want to see. Exactly. You know, speaking of more. I thought you were gonna say vaginal diarrhea, and I, I was like, <laughs> what <laughs> is that? <laughs> So my pipes are reversed. I'm too tired today. <laughs> it's it's so I, I do want to see a Mr. Sinister movie. I think that'd be fucking dope. Well, so because he was supposed to be obviously at the end they that was he was going to be the next element. Yeah. Now like they fucking after right they led up to that yeah. to believing that it was being Mr. Sinister. But, um, I have a feeling be, once he get once the the MCU really does absorb the the X Men into their continuity. Honestly, he's the only one they can do because everybody else they've done. They're not going to do fucking apocalypse right away. They need to redo um, that. Yeah, they, they may do a, a new Magneto down the line. Yeah, but they need to like I say the same way with like um, when Marvel decided, hey, we're going to do a Spider-Man movie. Who would villain? We'll just do the Vulture. He's a character that hasn't been done on screen before, and we can do something unique with. I think Mister Sinister, like a genetic, like a a mutant who's obsessed with genetics and all this stuff, and like yeah, that could be interesting. So. Well, well, on that note, they won't make him look like he does in the comic because he looks like. Listeners, wipe your chin because we got a whole lot of nerd all over you. I know. <laughs> I think there's more nerd references in this than in any other podcast we've well, done. Well, we say the evening one is a lot bit different than the AM one. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. And, you know, it, I'm so glad that we're back together recording, guys. I missed, yeah. missed recording with y'all. Um, before we end on our, our normal catchphrase, I do have one more quote to say that it's been on my mind all day. And it's really good. It goes out to 2020 to a very. Prospectful year. I hope we even grow even more. And I, I can't thank the listeners enough. Uh, you know, all over the world, which is really weird to say. It's crazy. It, it is really crazy. And thank you so much for all the listeners and all the support that we've had. Now we got people um, in Russia wanting to kill. Oh, James. I know exactly. <laughs> oh, Mother Russia. Jesus Christ. But yeah, there's this quote, and it says, and I, I, I stand true to it for 2020, and I'm probably gonna botch it up. Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers, Scott Hall. It says, uh, "Hard work pays off. Dreams come true." Bad times, bad times don't last, but bad guys do. And I, 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 that's my sentiment to each and every one of y'all. On you know, as far as James, Derek, Tanner, ugh, uh, <laughs> and, and Adam Danger, uh, you know that 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 one's for us. And I hope we we grow even more than we have. And I couldn't do it without y'all. But on that note, Sorry. thank you. Oh, this one's for you, Ooh, Keanu. Keanu. Yeah. There we go. We're, we suck at our own. <laughs> I'm about to say Keanu. And, um, <laughs> Good night, guys. Peace.